Egyptian ambassador to Azerbaijan Hisham Mohamed Nagy is a professional diplomat. He received a bachelor's degree from the Faculty of Economics and Political Science at Cairo University in 1988. He worked in the Egyptian Ministry of Foreign Affairs since 1991. At the same time, he worked in various positions in Egypt's diplomatic corps from 2009 to 2013. He held the positions of counselor at the Indonesian Embassy, an ambassador extraordinaire and plenipotentiary to Indonesia from 2014 to 2018. He served as Egypt's ambassador to Burkina Faso from 2018 to 2022. He was deputy assistant minister for South African affairs since 2022. Hisham Mohamed Nagy has served as Egypt's ambassador extraordinaire and plenipotentiary to Azerbaijan. Mr. Ambassador, welcome to the interview. Your insights on Egypt-Azerbaijan relations are valuable. Thank you for joining us today. Mr. Ambassador, can you give us an insight on the current state of affairs between Egypt and Azerbaijan? In particular, about the important developments within these relations that have taken place recently. The relations between Egypt and Azerbaijan have a long history. The former Egyptian president Abdel Nasir visited Baku in 1958. Egypt was one of the first states to recognize Azerbaijan's independence. We opened our embassy here in 1993, and in 1994, Azerbaijan's embassy was opened in Cairo. It was a great honor for us to welcome Haider Aliyev, the national leader of Azerbaijan, the founder of the modern Azerbaijani state in Cairo, in 2007. We had the privilege to welcome His Excellency President Ilham Aliyev to Egypt. The visit of the President of Egypt, His Excellency Abdel Fattah el-Sisi to Azerbaijan in January 2023, played an important role in the development of relations between our countries. It became an important event in the development of bilateral relations. In addition, the President of the Egyptian Senate visited Azerbaijan in July this year to participate in the Conference of the Parliamentary Network of the Unaligned Movement Member States. Another important visit of the Chairman of the Egyptian Chamber of Deputies took place in May this year to participate in the 100th anniversary of the birth of Azerbaijan's national leader Haider Aliyev. This is about the official visits. In addition, a meeting of the Intergovernmental Joint Commission of the two countries took place in 2022. After that, political consultations were held between the two countries. We hope and wish that our relations will be further strengthened. In what specific areas is there already a basis for cooperation between Egypt and Azerbaijan? And what can you say about the possibilities of strengthening this cooperation in the near future? The relations between Egypt and Azerbaijan are not only bilateral, but have also been established within the framework of the UN, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and the non-aligned movement. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you on Azerbaijan's four-year chairmanship of the non-aligned movement. I would like to add that everything is going well under the leadership of Mr. President Ilham Aliyev. As for bilateral relations, many agreements and memorandums have been signed between our countries. The first agreement on development of relations has already been established. The agreements cover the political, cultural, medical pharmaceutical and agricultural spheres. In parallel, we are working on the development of other areas. Mr. Ambassador, tourism is an important aspect of diplomatic and economic relations between the countries. What steps have been taken to develop tourism between Egypt and Azerbaijan? Speaking of tourism, I would like to mention that the tourism existed even before direct flights between our countries, but after the direct flights opened in 2018, tourism increased exponentially. Unfortunately, these flights were discontinued during the COVID-19 pandemic, but since March 18, 2022, direct flights have resumed. The number of Azerbaijani tourists traveling to Sharm el-Sheikh is increasing. We want to see the flow of tourism to other regions of Egypt as well. Cultural and educational exchange programs play an important role in developing ties and mutual understanding between our peoples. Can you elaborate on the cultural and educational initiatives to strengthen relations between Egypt and Azerbaijan? And how do you think these programs will contribute to overall bilateral cooperation? 
I would like to start with the scholarship provided by Egypt for students studying Arabic in Azerbaijan. In addition, Egypt has a large number of Azerbaijani students studying in various fields of petroleum, medical, pharmaceutical, and maritime academies. There is cooperation between our countries in the field of restoration of museums and the return of historical works taken abroad. Relations in the field of arts are also developing. To commemorate the 100th anniversary of national leader Haider Aliyev's birth, a musical concert program, organized jointly by the Azerbaijani Embassy in Cairo and the Egyptian Opera Theatre, was presented in Cairo on November 25th. This is one of the examples of our successful cooperation. The Middle East is a region of geopolitical importance and complexity. How does Egypt view the current situation in the Middle East? And what role does it play in ensuring stability and cooperation in the region? The Middle East is an important region for the whole world. The Suez Canal is located in the area. There are large gas and oil reserves in the region. These are the economic aspects. The region has witnessed several problems between Israel and the Arab states. After the 1973 war, Egypt signed a peace agreement with Israel in 1979. In that war, Egypt liberated the Sinai Peninsula, which the Israelis call Yom Kippur. We wish for the conflict in the Middle East to be fully resolved. It is necessary to promote a peaceful resolution and to reach an agreement under which both states will exist. The state of Palestine must remain within the borders of June 4, 1967, with East Jerusalem as its capital. That will pave the way for peace in the Middle East. Egypt has repeatedly called for an end to the conflict between Israel and Palestine. Egypt is known for its contribution to regional diplomacy. We would like to hear your thoughts on Egypt's role in promoting dialogue in the Middle East and the potential for cooperation with Azerbaijan in these efforts. The Middle East needs peace. I would like to note that a ceasefire has been reached between Israel and Hamas through the mediation of Egypt, Qatar and the US. We want that ceasefire to last longer. It is now possible to send humanitarian aid to meet the needs of the population of the Gaza Strip, which has been bombed by the IDF. At the same time, conditions have been created for the evacuation of the wounded in the Gaza Strip and for their hospitalization in Egypt and elsewhere. The truce only lasts for a few days. Conditions have been created for the entry of humanitarian aid trucks into Gaza, the delivery of food, clothing, and basic necessities, and the release of hostages by both parties. We wish for a speedy end to the war and for the advent of peace. Egypt does not accept attacks against civilians on either side. Will Egypt consider granting asylum to Palestinian refugees from the Gaza Strip? This question is particularly interesting as attracts the attention from a wider audience. Egyptian President Abdul Fattah Sisi has publicly stated that Egypt does not accept the resettlement of Palestinians. A Palestinian citizen must remain on his land. Forced displacement means the collapse and disintegration of the country. The world will not accept that. That is why we believe that aid must be continuous. A truce must be signed. The bombing of civilians must stop. The state of Palestine must be recognized with East Jerusalem as its capital. We ask from the position not only of Egypt, but of all the countries in the world that support Israel, not to apply obvious double standards. The facts of the killing of more than 4,000 babies, more than 6,000 women, and the deaths of hundreds of people under the rubble are appalling. Israel, as a state, must ensure the safety of the population. This is also reflected in the Geneva Convention. We wish that the State of Israel would respond to the calls for peace. At the meeting of the Islamic Arab states held in Riyadh, a ministerial commission was proposed. This delegation traveled to Russia and the UK. They were asked to support the establishment of peace in the Middle East. Mr. Ambassador, the thoughts voiced during the interview were very valuable. We appreciate your taking the time to share your experience with us. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for the interview. I hope that our cooperation with Baku TV will be long-lasting. See you next time.
ونسعد ان احنا نشوفهم مره ثانيه ان شاء الله